Hi guys, today I'm going to introduce you to the production switcher. And we're going to start with some basics, and then we're going to move into some advanced user operations with the unit. So when we look at the production switcher, you have it organized in rows of keys. These banks of keys provide lots of levels of access and different things you can do on the screen. And the way it works is you have your preview bus here, your program bus here. Preview is what's about to go to air. Program is what's on air. There's nothing labeled, if you notice, on any of these previews. However, right above is. And so the button here corresponds to the source above it. The way you know you're in another layer underneath with the shift button, because there's more sources than buttons, it's blinking. And then all you have to do is go to shift to get into it. So that's how you fix that. Preview always lights up green. It's on standby. It's, it's in a ready state. Program's always red. It's on air. It's the tally light. It's the red light like you see on your field cameras. This one here is the memory row. It's the macro row. It's for shortcuts that are used to basically build sequences, um, multiple commands. It's like a cue list player if you think of it in that way. Then we come up to here and we've got another preview and another program bus. And I'll go over what this does in a little bit, but it's called mixed effects preview and program. And the idea with that is that it allows you to do even more capabilities and expansion on the unit. Above that, we have our key sources and destinations. And I'll get into that a little bit later as well. So again, remember preview, program. That's the only thing you have to remember starting out. So for example, if I want to ready the radar, I simply come down here, press it on preview. It's now in the preview monitor up on the monitor wall. And to take it on the air, I hit cut right here. And it moves from left to right. Now it's on program. I then bounced up to here. This is now tally light with red. And that's how that source is controlled. The preview bus is where it's about to go to air. Program is what's on the air. Next to that, we have our bank of keyers. And if you think of the keyers, we have six of them in this unit. They stack. So your background is the bottom most layer of video. And then you've got on top of that keyer one, and on top of that keyer two. And then you have keyer three, four, five, and six. However, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. You can manipulate the keyers and move them around using the key priority button. And I'll show you that in a little bit too. Uh, think about that as your layers in your editing interface. Uh, the only one you can't control is the background mode. It will always be the background layer, no matter what. Below the keyers is what we call the transition area. And we have the mix, which dissolves, cut, which basically is a hard cut on the air, and then we have the transition that's auto transition. And that basically automatically moves the timing for you. Above that is the type of transition if you want a wipe pattern. So when you look at the transition section, know that everything is manual. When you hit cut, it's a hard cut. If you want, the T-bar gives you that manual control. And you can move the T-bar to mix between sources. If you want a more even flow, if your hand's a little jerky, you're going to get an unsteady motion. So the way you fix that, auto transition. It ensures a very smooth dissolve. If it's set for mix, your auto transition's going to do a dissolve. If you're set for a wipe, your auto transition's going to wipe. And it's that simple. With the transitions, when I select a transition, it opens up the pix pad area over here. And the PIX pad area allows me to select the specific type of transition I want. And then that loads it in the button here so that all I have to do is hit auto. If I don't want to hit auto and I want that manual control, again, I can use the T-bar and just bring it down like that. That's how you make a transition. So now that you know, again, preview, program, 
The way you work the production switcher is as follows. You always keep your left hand on the preview row because it's what the director is going to be telling you to get ready. Coming up next, standby camera one, ready camera three, standby camera two. When they say take, that's a command that moves it to air. So take would be a hard cut. Take camera two. Now camera two is on air. See the red light? Camera two is now on air. Ready camera one. Take camera one. That's the action hand right here. This is the action hand. This is the ready hand. This is the action hand. So ready camera one. Take camera one. Ready camera three. Take camera three. It's that simple. Now, I want to show you where all of this corresponds on the monitor wall because as technical director, you need to be very focused and paying attention to what's happening up on the screens. So if we turn our attention to the monitor wall, on the first panel, we see we have preview and program and these two windows match the same colors on the board. So if you go to the control surface, again, we know that our ready command is in green. Our on air is red. So again, preview, green, program, red. That's where it's gonna show up. So if I wanna preview color bars and then take them on the air, so I've got ready color bars, take color bars, that take command moves it to on air. Now it's red here, it's on air. And the way this works is when you preview a source, it shows up on the left. Once I move that source, it moves from left to right. It moves from preview to program. The source that was previously on program now moves into preview. So if you're ping-ponging between cameras, you don't necessarily have to then wait for the director to say preview that same source again because you were just on air with it. They'll simply say ready camera one and then take camera one and then take camera three, take camera one take camera three. Notice there no, there's no need for a ready command because it's already on standby. So that's the concept between preview and program. Below that, we see that we have the various input sources. These are all live video cameras. So for instance, inputs one, two, three, four, and five are all cameras. Camera one, camera two, camera three, our PTZ camera up at the ceiling, and then our jib camera on the crane. That's how that works. Below that are our keyers. Again, we have six of those, six keyers. And remember, the keyers allow you to stack on top. The keyer itself is a placeholder. It allows you to put another video source inside of it. That video source could be an animation, it could be a still image, it could be uh, a package, or it could be a camera. So in the case of weather, and you're wanting to composite that on top of a background, to get that green out of the picture, you would assign it a keyer. And then that's what they call a chroma key, the type of key. And that would be where you remove the green, you sample the green, remove it, and then what's underneath that key, the background mode, the map in that case, or the graphic, is what shows through. That's the purpose of keying. It allows you to have multiple layers of graphics. So we'll get into that in a little bit. That's what these two areas are. Up above, you'll see that we have all of our video sources right here. And it tells you what they are and the times associated with them. And where this comes in in handy is, let's say I, I wanna go to a graphic. I've got this looping graphic here. If I take that on the air, now I know that it's on the air because Clips 2 is showing up in red. That's the tally light for that. So that's indicating that it's on air and it's counting me down here. So I know that I've got a loop going on because it's counting down and constantly repeating with this blue bar. The clock is counting down, so I know how much time is left in that segment. If it did not loop, it would turn to red at about 10 seconds left. So let's take a look at that, where that might happen. Current OC continues. And now it turns red. That's the heads up, we're almost getting out of it. Above that, we have another preview and program. Notice it's green and red. That is correlating to the ME section, the mixed effects section. And 
It's the same concept as what you learned earlier with preview and program. The difference being this one's on air, it's what the viewers see at home, this one's on air but in a different location. So for instance, in our location, it's the on air for the monitor on the set. So let's preview um, on our viewers at home monitor the jib because that camera has the monitor in frame. If I take that on air, now I can see that. So now we can see that. Let's put some images in that monitor. And we do that by looking up here and then going to our mixed effects. So if I want to preview color bars in that, it's the same as down here. I have a replica of that panel up here. So I know I've got all my keyers available. I have all of my direct keys, my transitions, it's all right here. And it's a direct copy of down here that's independent. So if I want to preview, like I said, color bars, there they are. They're previewed here and I see them up there. I take them on air and now they're showing up in that monitor and they're sideways because it's a vertical monitor. So that's how that works. So again, preview program. It's the same concept for any of these two areas. I ready a shot. I take it. I ready another camera. I take it. And I'm changing the source in there. If I want to ready that radar shot and put it in the monitor, I take it in, put it in the monitor. So to get started on the board, we have the macro row. It's where a series of presets can be recalled. And I want to show you how we, we use them. For instance, if I see these same sources on the macro row, I am not in the macro mode. I'm in the name mode of the sources. I need to change that by clicking here to get into my memory or macro mode. So I click that. Now that I've punched that up, I can see I have a setup button. What the setup does is it sets up the sources we want to see properly in the keyers, and then it changes the stacking order of those keyers. So if you look here, right now my keyers are straight lined. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can also see this over on the right hand monitor wall right in here. To set up properly, I hit this button once and it recalls my setup. And now I'm staggered because on our particular unit, the keyers have certain functionalities assigned to them. For instance, not all of them can have the same camera sources applied to them or the same uh, media applied to them. So because of those limitations, I have figured out the best combination for you guys and gone ahead and assigned it, it will probably work 90% of the time. So that's why that setup's been created. It sets you guys up as a one-time thing at the start of your session. Make sure you just hit the macro on and then macro setup and you're good to go. Moving along to the other monitor wall, I want to show you what's on here. We have two banks of clip players. They're also sources and the clips are your packages or show opens, graphics, things of that nature. Below that are two animation sources and the animations are different from the clips in that yes they may move however what they're doing is very very different. They are stitching together files and as you know in video 30 frames equals one second of video so every second of animation it's actually rendering 30 and stitching 30 files together to complete that animation on air. Therefore, when you recall one of those up, the length of the animation is going to be the length of time it takes to build that animation before you see the first rotation of it or the first sign of movement from it. So we have two banks of those. We've got two banks of character generator and our CG character generator is basically your still graphics. So it's any kind of text a lot of times what we do is use them in tandem with our animations and we stack and merge the text over top of the animated background so it's not just a static image that's being portrayed on air it has a little bit of motion to it, a little bit of movement and it makes your show look a little bit more branded. 
Below that, we've got two still stores, and basically those give us the ability to have a still image frozen that we can recall up, like a JPEG file, anything like that. So it could be a still background, a static shot, whatever we want to do. We could freeze something and bring it in there and re reference it that way. So we have two of those. We have a couple of other inputs on the side there. For instance, we have our HyperDeck, which is our playback source. Uh, if we want to record the show and then play it back, we have one of those. And we can even control that on the uh, control surface here if we want to take control of it and, and page through it, just like our clip servers. So what's unique about the clip store is that when you guys are finished exporting your content in the editing suite, you basically send it over to the media server and the name of the file is what gets ingested into here. And then we'll take it in and put it in the proper order and get it all set up in the players for you so that in clips one and clips two, the name corresponds on the button. And, and what's unique about that is, you know, for instance, in the button down here, it'll show the icon for clips one, clips two, but then underneath it, it gives you the file name of what's loaded into clips one and clips two. So very much like the way the keyers are a placeholder that you can assign content to within that realm, that inside that box, the same goes true for any of the animation, CG, or the clip stores, uh, still stores. That's all giving you the ability to have content put inside of it. And the type of content is what dictates where it goes, whether it's a clip, an animation, uh, uh, a still store. So for example, we can have two instances of the character generating uh, unit running at the same time. And that software is assigned to channels A and channels B. The way we do that is we go to CG over here, and then you see rapid CG A, channel A is assigned to CG1 right here that we can see. CG1, channel A, then we come over here, channel B is on CG2, channel B, CG2, and of course that's assigned to Kier 2. Clips 1. Clips 1 has all of our show graphics loaded at the moment. Clips 2 has a couple of background loops. Still stores have a couple of boxes. I can change them and, and, and send from here to what's on deck here because this is all the stuff I have available at my disposal to work with, but I can filter what actually gets sent to the on decks for air by selecting it here. Only one thing can go at a time if you think of it that way. So for example, I can only send, if I want to send um, the test pattern, there's my test pattern. That's the only thing I can send in this particular channel. I can only send one. I have all of these options down here, but I can only send one at a time. So whether it be the, the background for my box shot, or color bars, or the test pattern, a multi-burst, that's how that works. Animation, the same thing. I can select, when I select over here on the Pix pad, I actually can see it over here on the monitor to see a still frame that's representative of what I'm sending. So for instance, I have the logo wipe. So if I want to see that, I'll bring it up for you full screen here. Ready that and take it. There it is. If I want to send the courtesy, there it is. The credit at the end, there it is. Dual anchor tag. Notice these don't have the names because they come from a different source. And it's our computer newsroom system that actually assigns the order of everything. And then we use the memories, the macros, to stitch the two items together. Graphics basically has to send the correct graphic through that live open channel of character generation. Uh, it changes on the fly with whatever they want to send. So if they want to send a weather graphic, see now weather's coming through, but it's in channel A because that's the only instance open right now. So that's how that would work. And then I've got lower thirds in my animations and over the shoulder. It takes a minute to build and then it comes in. See, there it is. I can do a tease graphic. Again, that's an animation, it has to build, 
and you stitch it with the text from the character generator. Or there can be a, a full screen slate, which is the background element. Text would go on top of it. So those are the various elements that we recall during a broadcast. Again, it's preview, camera one, take camera one. Preview camera two, take camera two. Ready camera three, take camera three. Ready camera one. If I want to mix, I hit mix. Dissolve to camera one, using the auto dissolve. Ready camera two, dissolve to camera two. Ready camera three, dissolve to camera three. If I want to do that with the T-bar, I can do the same thing. Ready camera one, dissolve to camera one. Ready camera two, dissolve to camera two. Ready PTZ, dissolve to PTZ. It's that simple. If I want to wipe, I select the wipe. I can I use the T-bar the T again. Ready camera one, wipe to camera one. Ready camera two, wipe to camera two. I want to use the auto transition, I can do that. Ready camera three, wipe to camera three. Ready camera one, wipe to camera one. But now there's a problem. With the T-bar, because I have the manual control, I can control the velocity at which I complete that move. For instance, right now I'm holding right there. But I can go really slow if I want to. How do I do that with the auto transition? I can select that and change the speed. So if I look at the auto transition, what I can do is come down here and select the wipe. That puts me in the wipe patterns over here in the picks pad. So it gets me out of the, the CGs, clips, and all of that. And then down here in the corner is a transition rate button. If I push this, now it's asking me for the transition rate that I want to set. And I just come over here to this knob and I can change it. So if I want to make it really slow, I'll go up to like 100. And that hit enter, and now it's right there. So let's watch what happens now. If I want to ready PTZ and wipe to PTZ, look at how slow it is. Again, wipe to camera three. Same thing for dissolve. The rate is still the same. So if I want to dissolve, now you can see how slow it is. Notice when both sources are in the middle of a dissolve, they light up red, telling you that both are on air because they're overlapping, they're on air at the same time. Again, to change the time on the auto transition, you simply pull up the white pattern, you might have to hit it a couple times, until you see the transition rate button down here in the bottom left. You can hit that, go up here to the knob, change it to your desired speed, hit enter, now you'll see it confirms it down here. And now if I go to mix, there it is. If I want to change it up, I can change the pattern from uh, the corner to say a cross. And you can see how that's changing it. There's a multitude of these that you can go through and select from. Just hit next, back, and select what you want. You can't position, for instance, if you, if you want to um, use the circle wipe, it's always going to be from the middle. You can't position this using the joystick like you can in some editors because years ago that stemmed from when they used to put an interpreter in the corner or the like. Now you can do that with digital video effects. You don't need to do that as part of a transition. They don't do it that way anymore. So that functionality is not there. So, the only control you have is going into controls here. You can reverse the transition if you want, and you want to do the opposite. Um, it also gives you the ability to change the fade to black rate. So I haven't talked about that. And what's great about fade to black is 
Say you've got all of these layers of video occurring on the screen and you know you want to go to black next, but you've got graphics and things over top. How are you going to do that? You need to go to black. Your program's done. It's fading to black. How do you do that? Fade to black will cover over everything and take it all off evenly. And that button's right here. So if I hit fade to black, the rate at which that happens, control from, again, within the controls of the transition effects, and you go to controls down there, and it's an option right here, FTB transition rate, and then you know you're engaged in fade to black when it's lit up in the corner over here. Both MEs have that. So that's how you know.